Oh, my God. Let me through here. No, no, no. Let me through here. No. No. Oh, you get that young scamp down here right now. Oh, the constable, he's the spark of the show up there. Three cap doesn't need any of your dangerous stunts. On surface types is all alike. Now he knows what he's doing. Besides, it's good for business. It is a corpse just as good for business. Oh, my God. Bone in his body. He's the boy that used to work over on the carousel. Ain't no use. that they take me, but he wouldn't. It's almost a prison here. I can't walk outside of this yard without somebody pulling me back. Winnie, who are you talking to? Grandma. Nobody, Grandmother. Now Mother's gonna practice piano. Then she's gonna make me practice. Every day, the same thing. I can't even cross the road by myself. Do you know that? I can't even go into the woods. You should have seen him. He was standing on his head. He was hanging by his feet. He was doing everything. While the wheel went round and round, and then the wheel stopped right when he was standing on his hands. What happened? He fell. I bet it was a hundred feet right to the ground. Golly, I bet he was a mess. No, that's the funny part. He wasn't hurt at all. He got up and ran away with the constable right after him. You know, you should have been there. See what I mean? They didn't even stop to say hello. They never stopped to say hello. You know what I'm gonna do, Turtle? One of these days, I'm gonna run away. One of these days, I'll be just as free as you. Winifred, what have you got there? Winifred, did you hear me? Your grandmother, Winnie. Just a thing, Grandma. Well, you just put that thing down and come in here for lunch. Girlie's got the table set. I'm not going to ask you what that thing is, but if you don't want it to wind up in a pot, you better put it down and come on in. You better get out into the woods before she changes the mirror. I wish I could go with you. Then I wouldn't have to go in there and listen to them argue all the time. Or practice my piano. Or be scolded all the time. I wish I could be free. Winnie, what are you doing out there? You know you're never to cross the road. Come back here this minute. See what I mean? But it won't be this way forever. You'll see. Be careful of the cows. Wake up, Tug. 
wake up, the fog's lifted. The sun's as high as it gets. The boys will be home tomorrow. The boys will be home tomorrow. Why'd you have to wake me, May? I was having that good dream again. One about how we're all in heaven and I never heard a tree gap. That why you take so many naps? Don't make no difference. Ain't nothing gonna change. May as well put that shawl away. The weather ain't changed yet. Have it. You're all trussed up. Where are you off to? I thought I'd take the horse and go down to the wood. I don't think I'd do that, May. Ain't nobody seen us in over ten years, and I ain't talked to nobody in thirty. I'll ride in at sunset, just to the wood. All right, suit yourself. I got work to do. Can you fix my music box? The spring's broke. Oh, you can fix it. May, that thing plays well enough. Besides, you can't expect a thing to last forever, can you? About time you threw it out anyway. You made that for me a month before we were married. And I promised to keep it running as long as I lived. Well, how am I supposed to fix it if you're fixing to take it with you? There ain't a sound in the woods this time of year. It keeps me company. All right, I'll fix it when you get back. What are you going to those woods for, anyway? The boys talk their due home. It's been ten years. Years come and gone like a full moon. Will you be all right? I won't be home till late tomorrow. Well, what in the world do you think could happen to me? Well, life's full of surprises, I always say. wonder what the boys been up to. <laughs> Don't much matter, does it? When you've lived as long as we have, full moon ain't nothing but a wink of the eye. And sun up, another blink. And ten years? About as much time as it takes to heat up a pot of coffee.
Good evening. Well, now, amazing, isn't it? A fireflies, that is. Those living sparks ought to be dead this late in the year. The heat must have fooled them. That just goes to show you, the world is alive with surprises. You got one? Oh, hold and hold it, girl, hold it. Make it work for you. If you own a cow, milk it. Get your chickens to lay. Perhaps that little bug will light your bedroom tonight. Is that your house? What's your name? Winnie. Winnie Foster. Well, Winnie Foster, you and your folks lived here long? Oh, yes. We've lived here forever. Forever? Do you want to speak to my father? Oh, maybe, maybe. But you and I are having such a nice talk here, aren't we? person can't be all business, can he? No. No. But then I suppose you hardly bother yourself with such matters. You know what? My guess would be that a looker like you would know everybody in this area. I don't, but my grandma... I couldn't keep it anyway. Oh, a mistake. No one has enough time on this cold clod of a planet to let go of anything. You gotta grab and hold it, girl. Grab it. Hmm? Winifred, who are you talking to out there? It's a man, Granny. I can see that. Good evening, madam. How uh, delightful it is to see you looking so fit. Why shouldn't I be fit? I don't seem to recall that we've ever met. Well, this pretty young lady here was just about to tell me that uh, you know everyone in these parts. The fortune teller is we've just read children's minds. Well, I, I find fortunes. And both of you are part of my search. Well, there aren't any fortunes around here. Just honest folk. We certainly don't need any... You all right, madam? Hush up. My star. That's the fairy music. I haven't heard it in years. Winifred, that's the music the elves made that I told you about. I haven't heard it in ages. This is the first time you've heard it, isn't it? Wait till we tell your father. Wait. You say you've heard that music before. <laughs> Sounds like your music box to me. My, my. It's the elves you heard. Oh, did I say that? It's the elves themselves. Now, they have to gather together every so often in the woods, and, and then they dance, maybe five times in a lifetime. You can't believe your ears. What can you believe? Uh, we better go in. Good night. Isn't that the prettiest music you ever did hear? Soon they'll be dancing around under the moon, and the bears and the foxes will come out and join them. It's no night for a little girl to be out. Oh, Woods tomorrow is just shine. Don't fill her head full of goose stuffing about the wood. But it's true. I heard the music. It is not. I will encourage her to go there. The wood belongs to the elves. Oh, mother. Since the Sullivan thing, I don't want her in there. The boxes and the beer stands, too. And that's a fact. Get out of there now. Shoot with you. I'll be having none of this. Get out of my raspberry. Is that milk cold? I'll not be needing any sour. You just don't trust me, do you? 
We should never have gotten rid of that cow. And that's a fact. Well, listen, you want to be modern, don't you? Besides, cows kick. Oh, it's going to be a warm one today. Well, it's like better in January. Freeze or fry, I've got to be getting breakfast ready for the boss. I suppose you've been hearing along the route about the elves. The witch? The elves. Mrs. Swear, she heard the elves making music in the wood last night. Well, she did, huh? <laughs> well, elves or no, I reckon you won't catch me up to those woods. Never can tell what's going to happen. Old Tom Sullivan? Like to beat his wife to death in them wars. And that's a fact. Might as well come out. I didn't mean to stare. What are you doing here? I own these woods. Well, my father does. Oh, then you must be one of the Fosters. Which one are you? I'm Winnie. Winifred. Winnie. Winifred. I'm Jesse Tuck. How do? Can I have it? Well, sure. It's pretty, ain't it? 
What are you doing here? Oh, well, nothing much. Do you live here? No. I come by here now and then, though. To see the elves and the foxes and the bears dance? <laughs> no. Well, I've never seen that. And I've seen an awful lot. Can you go anywhere you'd like? Sure. Can't you? I'm too young. How old are you? Well, I'm... I'm 104 years old. I mean, truly. 17. 17, that's old. Are you married? <laughs> no. Are you? What were you doing up there? Oh, nothing much. Just calling a few birds. This water feels cold. Uh, I know that. And it tastes terrible, too. You drank it? Well, I know, but it tasted bad. You're so thirsty. I'll just take a sip. Oh, that water's bad. Uh, you want to climb the tree? No. Why not? It's nice and cool up in the tree. I can't reach. You up on my shoulder. Don't be scared. There you go. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Hold on tight. Got it? There you go. What do you see up there? Everything. Why don't you come up, too? That's just Ma. It's Ma and Miles. Ooh. It's my Ma and my brother. They're supposed to meet me here. For what? Is it a secret? Picnic. You hear the music back. Oh, oh. Hey. <laughs> you look like you've kept out of trouble. What's the matter? Haven't you got a hug for your old Ma? Oh, keep your britches on. What do we got here? A girl. A growing girl? Ginger needs a drink. Come on, Ginger. What's she doing here? Come on, Ginger, drink up. A pile in the woods. I told you the water was good. You didn't let her drink none of that water, did you? Ma. You won't let me. <laughs> You're a lucky girl. He really thinks of anybody but himself. Oh, no, you got no call to say that. Winnie? Winnie? Who's that? I don't know. I knew this was bound to happen. You could take her with us. What? She ain't drunk nothing. She's got killed too. Winnie, do you hear me? You come out of there. Come out. We gotta get away from here. Come on. Come on, come on now. Jesse, where are you taking me? Wait. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Come on. 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 Little girl called for help, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, she was just funning. Uh, we're family to the girl. Oh. So your names are Foster, then? No, uh, we be the Tucks. Tucks, you say? Interesting, I'd say. Winnie Foster, you all right, girl? Speak up. Why don't you leave the girl alone? I'd like to hear from the child. Winnie? We ain't got no guns, mister. It, it, it ain't neighborly to wave that thing around like that. This is a precaution, merely. 
We need these folks friends of yours. They won't hurt you. I'll see to that. You can tell me the truth. I'm... We're going on a picnic, like she said. I was just teasing you. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Hey. You oughtn't to play such tricks, Winnie. I can't imagine that your grandmother would approve. Mr. Weaver. You folks live around here? We're in the area for the fair. Oh, so you come from the mountains, eh? Well and well. Whereabouts would that be? Mister, we'd best be getting on. Well, now, I think that I owe all of you an apology. Did you put that gun away? Not this. This is harmless. Here, I'll show you. He's right, it's, uh, the misfires. They're blanks. I use them to scare away dogs and robbers. The last thought I had in my head was to scare you. It just makes a lot of noise, that's all. Come on, Jim. Hope you enjoy your picnic, Winnie. Good day to you, too, Tux. You take Ginger across, Jesse. Well, I'll take Winnie. Why can't I take her? Stay with Ruth. Ginger. Ruth. Hold on tight now. Oh, oh, oh. Don't get those feet wet. <laughs> There's a hole in your shirt. Huh? Oh, it's, uh, it just got torn. When that man shot you. I see nothing happen. I was scared. <laughs> so was I. Oh, where's that, Jesse? There you go. Say, Winnie, uh, would you like to come home with us? Not to mention Ginger. <laughs> Come on, let's go.
Is this the little girl the boy's been hooping about? Somebody said something about a natural growing child. I think you'd have a gift for patience by now. Well, I'll be if you ain't the prettiest little thing I ever saw. My name's Angus Tuck. And Winnie Foster. Hi, ah, well, Winnie Foster, you come right on down here now. After that long ride, you must be needing a bit of refreshment. Why don't you join the boys down there in the pond, huh? Go right ahead now. Tuck. What's the matter, May? Winnie is a good girl from a proper home. Oh. Well, I don't think they're in the altogether. How's the water, Miles? Hey, come on in, Jess. about that child tonight, May. I told you before. Except she didn't tell you about the man in the yellow suit. What man? He seemed to know when he tried to stop us from taking her off. He had a pistol. Took a shot at me. And he knows. I don't see how he couldn't. As soon as we talk to that child, we'd just best be moving up out of here. It's a child I'm worried about. What do you want me to do, Pa? Find out about that man in the yellow suit. Find out who he is. Then... Talk. And then we'll decide. Hitch up Ginger in the morning, right into town. Jesse, fetch me that kettle. Just a minute, Ma. Mm -hmm. Feel pretty, ain't it? you a bit as to why you have to promise not to tell about the spring. You know, that's really the only reason we brought you here. Never thought we'd live to see the day when we'd be scaring little children. We're going to get you home just as fast as we can. Besides, I don't think we've got a whole lot of time. That's funny, Pa. Seems to me like time's the only thing we got a lot of. Winnie, what I'm about to tell you may sound fantastical, but I swear to you, child, it's the truth. 
87 years ago, us Tucks came from way back east to find a place to settle down. But at that time, your pa's wood wasn't just a wood, it was part of a great big forest. We thought we'd start a little farm when we came to the end of the trees, but the trees never seemed to end. Anyways, one day after we traveled a long, long time, we came to the spot that your pa now owns. And it was real nice, Winnie. It looked just like it does now. A clearing, lots of sunshine, and that great big tree with all those knobby roots. We stopped and everybody had a drink at the spring. Even Ginger. No, the cat didn't drink. Now that's important. Yeah, don't leave that out. Everyone had a drink except for the cat. Well, anyway, Winnie, the water tasted, tasted sort of strange. But just the same, we camped there overnight and moved on the next morning. Finally, we came to a nice little spot out west in a pretty little valley. Where he built a house for Ma and Pa, and a little shack for me and Miles. Well, that's when we begun to see something peculiar. Jesse fell out of a tree. I was way up in the middle, Winnie, trying to saw some of the big branches before we cut her down. And all of a sudden, I lost my balance and I fell. He landed plumb on his head. And we thought for sure his neck was broke. Come to find out. It didn't hurt him a bit. And, and not long after, some hunters came by one day around sunset. The horse was grazing down by some trees, and they shot her. Mistook her for a deer, they said. But the thing is that the bullet didn't even hurt her. The bullet went clear through, hardly even left a mark. And Paul got bit by a copperhead. Yeah, and Jesse ate them poison mushrooms. Yeah, and I cut myself slicing bread. The thing is, Winnie, none of us got sick or hurt or nothing. But it was the passage of time that worried us. We'd settled down, farmed the land, made friends. But then we had to face up to the fact that something was terribly wrong. You see, Winnie, none of us was growing any older. I was more than 40. Had a wife and a child, and by the looks of me, I was still 25. Well, after a time, even our friends come to pull away from us. There was talk of witchcraft and black magic. Well, you can't hardly blame them, but finally we had to leave the farm. We went back the way we'd come, just wandering. And when we came to what was left of the wood to make a camp, when we got to the tree in the spring, we remembered them from before. And that's how we found out about the spring. That tree hadn't grown one whit in all the years since we had left it. It was exactly the same. Then we remembered about drinking the water, us and the horse, but not the cat. That cat had lived a long and happy life, but it had died ten years before. Give me that spoon, Winnie. I want to show you something. You 
see, Winnie? I can't be hurt. None of us can. And as far as I can see, we're all going to live forever. After we all found out, we sort of went crazy. Can you picture what it felt like to find that out? Yeah, but then we started to talk it over. We're still talking it over. But you see, Winnie, what I told you before about me being 104 years old, I was telling you the truth. But I'm really only 17. And as far as I know, I'll be 17 till the end of the world. Gosh, it feels so fine to tell somebody. Just think, Winnie. Besides us, you're the only one in the world that knows it. Well, that kind of talk will make her want to rush back and drink a whole gallon of this stuff. You know, there's a whole lot more to this than just Jesse Tuck's good times. Oh, stuff. We might as well enjoy it, as long as we can't do anything about it. You don't have to be such a parson all the time. I'm not being a parson. It's just that you ought to take this thing more serious. No, no. It's a sight more serious in good times, Jesse. Well, Winnie. Now you share our secret. It's a dangerous secret. But we're counting on you to help us keep it. If Jesse hadn't stopped you from drinking that water, you'd have been a little girl forever. Moving, does it? But it is. All day long, all night long. It's coming in through a stream up there to the east and going out the stream back there to the west. The current takes it to the sea and it's sucked up into the clouds and comes back to us over the hills. When it rains, it comes back to the streams and the ponds. Frogs are part of it. Bugs, fish, each living thing, a part of a moving circle. Winnie, listen to me. I want you to understand. Everybody's scared of dying. Everybody's scared of dying. When we drank that water from the spring and saw what was happening to us, why, we thought we were the, the luckiest people in the world. We were going to live forever. We thought of all the places we could go, the things we could do, what we could accomplish, not just for ourselves, but for everybody. It didn't take us long to see what it wasn't going to happen. You see, Winnie, if we attract the slightest bit of attention, if anybody gets curious and tracks us down and finds out our secret, why well then, somebody, maybe not the folks in Tree Gap, but somebody is going to make a business of it. Make a business out of playing God. people who could afford it. Don't you see, Winnie? The temptation to be rich is a powerful thing. And the world being what it is, somebody's bound to want to make money out of it. And when 
when there's any selling to be done. It means that somebody ain't going to be able to buy. Because then they've got to drink the water. Do you know what would happen to them? Why, they'd live forever. Can't you imagine? All the old ones, old forever. All the young ones, young forever. You know what it means? Forever. They wouldn't be part of the weed anymore, Winnie. They'd be trapped in the stream, like us. Oh, child. I just gotta make you understand. Pa, Pa, come quick! Ginger's missing! Why aren't you on looking? I was, Pa. Where's your ma? I don't know. She said she'd be back in a blink. Ginger could be out hunting huckleberries. Not when I was making a pie. Did you see her? No. I don't like to feel this, Pa. That horse always stuck close to the cabin. Well, who could have taken her? That man. In the yellow suit. Hey, you called to him, Winnie. Who is he? I don't know. But he only knows me because he came to our house last night. He has questions. Well, what did he ask? What's he after? I don't know. He talked to Grandma about folks. But he shot at my house. I'd forgotten what it was like to be scared. Hey, that's Ma. She's in court the bender. This is an occasion, Winnie. Me soaking up the calliope in your udder. Huckleberry pie and calliope. She's going all out for you, Winnie. Paul made this one so it plays by itself. It's too big for the cabin. Just hope those turtle doves ain't nested up there again. I ain't had a guest in 80 years and I plan to celebrate. <laughs> 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 Right. That's right. There, there. It's them darn doves. <laughs> As I say, it's a good distance from here. And it's good that I saw the kidnapping and followed him. Of course, I couldn't guess what they wanted for. But you know, all in all, they resemble gypsies to my eye. Gypsies? There are no gypsies around here. Well, last night, Winnie and I heard gypsy music coming from that wood, sure and sure. Those were elves. Now, Mother. And look here, whatever your name is. We'd appreciate it if you'd get to the point. Tell us where they have her, and I'll round up the constable, and we'll go get her. My, and my. You certainly live comfortably here. Nice old house. It's well designed, too. And plenty of land. What's this got to do I'll wager you have more land than you know what to do with. Fat and fat, hmm? You're saving it up for Winnie's future, perhaps. Now take that wood. The one in which we heard the gypsy's music. What about it? Well, I'd like to settle down. Live quietly. I came here searching for just such a quiet plot to purchase. And Winnie? A trade. A trade? You mean you won't tell us now, where my Winnie friend, is unless... A minute and a minute. I didn't say such a thing. What I am proposing here is a straight business deal. There and there. And if I don't choose to sell? Will you? You can't. I just want to know what our choices are. Business to the core. I like that. 
All right, then. Your daughter's whereabouts for the right to buy the wood. Extortion. Oh. What an ugly word. Oh, I have underestimated you. All right. What do you think is a fair price for the wood? You're nothing but a calculating man. Very well. Time and time. Well, let's just exchange our greetings and say good night. No, wait. I find it very, very hard to believe that folks can be so cold-hearted, especially with their own kin are concerned. But that's modern life, isn't it? If I sell you the wood, you'll tell us where Winnie is? Oh, I'll do more than that. I'll escort the constable to the very spot. I'll draw up the papers. Like you was asleep. We're awfully glad you came, mm -hmm. but tomorrow we'll tote you home. Still, it's nice to have the house filled again with children. The boys don't be home much. Where do they go in their way? What do they do? They go different places, do different things. Miles, so he can do carpentering. He's a pretty good blacksmith. Jesse now, he never seems so settled in himself. Of course, he's young. That sounds funny, don't it? Of course, they can't stay on any one place too long. You know, none of us can. Well, people get to wondering. We've been in this house about as long as we dare. It's going on 20 years. It's a right nice place. Tuck's got so he's real attached to it. But I guess we'll be moving on one of these days. It's just about time. That's too bad. Always moving. Never having any friends. Oh. Tuck and me, we got each other, that's a lot. Life's got to be lived. Whether it's long or short. I hope you listened real good to what Tuck told you. You make up your own mind. We're all hoping you'll help us keep our secret. Well, you sleep tight, child. I'll look in again when my chores is done. Good night, Winnie. Good night. If you need anything in the night, just holler. You know, it's been a long time since we've had a natural child in this house. But I guess I haven't forgotten. Hey, what is it? Oh, what didn't scare you nothing? thinking, Winnie. I know Pa's right about the spring and how he wants you to keep it a secret and all. But the way I look at it, now that you know about it, there ain't no harm in you drinking the water. Of course, I don't mean right now, Winnie. When you're 17 like I am. 
Then you and me, we could... Well, we could do anything. Go anywhere. You know, Winnie, Pa sometimes pretends he's living in a tomb. But it ain't all that bad. Why, just think of the things we could see, the places we could go. And we could help people, too. Do things other folks be scared to do, because nothing could hurt us. Well, like Miles does. Everywhere Miles goes, they're crazy about him. Because he helps people. He doesn't care what happens to himself. We could be like that, too, Winnie. Will you do it? Winnie? Will you drink the water when you're 17? It'd mean an awful lot. An awful lot to me. Everything's happened so quickly. I just can't make it all straight in my head. It's so hard to believe. I know it is, Winnie. But all I'm asking you to do is... is to think on it. Would you at least think on it? I will. Thank you, Winnie. farther we got to go. Across the river and up on over that ridge? About another ten miles, I'd say, all in all. Yeah, I've got to rest this old fella. He's a good animal, but he ain't used to such a high old time. Why, we haven't had this much excitement since Sullivan killed his wife. Well, we can't let him get away, Constable. I'll ride on ahead. You can follow the route I've indicated. Just how deep are you in this, anyway? I'm just a friend of the family, you might say. Foster sold me the wood. Well, I'll be. And them proud as peacocks. Well, don't you rest up too long now, here. Up and up. Now, don't you do anything till I get there, you hear? We gotta keep that little girl safe. Remember your oath, Constable. Justice first. Safety second. Mama! Jesse? Dreaming of you, I expect. Oh, you fretful. That shows you're coming to be a woman. Women worry more than men. You like Jesse, don't you? Yes. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird.
Mom always says life's full of surprises. It's beautiful. And I never would have thought it could happen so quickly. Thanks, Mary. You know, that fool horse has got me worried. Why? Yeah, she took off on her. Mr. Parker to wander off and knock him back in the morning for a feed. It's no surprise you win him. Corner Park. Morning, Morning my ass. I mean, those fish we were supposed to have with the flapjacks. Oh, just ain't biting this morning, I guess. Is Jesse up yet? <laughs> Jesse, you up? You got an admirer waiting. Why did somebody call me? Well, now, it's the first time you got to be called to breakfast. Morning, Winnie. Morning, Jesse. You set yourself over there. Yeah, it is. Well, Winnie, you ready to go home? I'll be the judge of that. Good morning. Not too early, am I? Winnie, darling, thank God you're safe. Who want to hurt Winnie? Now, take it easy. Riches and britches, young fella. Who are you, mister? I don't believe I've ever seen you before. Who I am is incidental, Mr. Tuck. It's who you are that brings me here. You mean... You ain't here to fetch Winnie? Oh, Winnie's going home all right. But for the time being, I'm not interested in Winnie. I've got a few words to say to you, and not much time to talk. So you better do well to listen. Pa, are you going to let him talk to us? Hush, boy. Let him speak. You're a wise man. A wise old man. Well, I'll be short and short. You see, I was born way east of here. And the whole time that I was a lad, my granny used to tell me tales. Wild, unbelievable tales. About a good and dear friend of hers that married into a most peculiar family. She married the elder of two sons. And they had a daughter named Anna. Anna. You must be Miles, am I right? No matter. Well, this friend of my granny's, Nancy was her name. She lived with her husband for maybe 20 years. And her husband never got any older. She did. He didn't. So Nancy, after a while, began to think that her husband was bewitched, or worse. So she left him. Restless and restless. What became of her? Oh, she died, I expect. We all do, don't we? But that isn't the moral of my tale. I wish you'd get to it, mister. I'm right on top of it. You see, nobody believed Granny's stories. Nobody but me. People who never grew old. People might never die. Who could believe it? I used to get her to tell me that story over and over again. Yes, sir, I plagued that old woman. Paid off, too. Oh, yes. She also remembered a music box that Nancy had owned. Better and better, she could sing the tune. And here's my point, Mr. Tuck. I learned the melody, too. I've hummed it. I've sung it. I've picked it out on pianos till I hate it. But all so I can find you. And last night I heard the music box itself in Foster's Wood. Winnie and I heard that old music box, didn't we, Winnie? My hair stood on end. Close and close. And then I saw this fine woman. Name of May, most likely, if Granny's memory be as true as I know it was. She and your two boys were escorting Winnie away. So naturally, I followed. 
Oh, and Miles, you'll have to forgive me my small experiment, huh? I ain't got it yet, mister. What is it you're planning on doing? It's not what I am planning on, it's what I've gone and done. Last night I traded Winnie's whereabouts for Foster's wood. Meat and neat. The spring is mine. Oh, and it's gonna make me rich. Very rich and rich. You mean you're gonna sell the water? <laughs> A brilliant deduction. I'll only sell it to an elite. To those that can afford my price. And who wouldn't give a fortune if they had it to live forever? I wouldn't. Which is exactly why I must take charge here. Why such an opportunity was dropped on such ignorant folk as you is beyond me. But, since you've already drunk the water, the waters of eternal life, that's what I'll call them, I'm going to give you all a chance to help me and to make yourselves only a little less rich than I shall be. You can help me advertise. Set up demonstrations, huh? Like the one I used with Miles. Think of it. Shoot him with real bullets to prove that he can't die. A better and better. Hang him by the neck from a gallows. Freak, so that you want to make freaks out of us. I only want to make you rich. I don't need any of you. I'll find that spring with or without your assistance. And I don't need your help to sell the stuff. It'll sell itself. Mister, you're plumb out of your mind. You can't let nobody know about that water. This is getting don't very you tiresome. See what very, very tiresome, Mr. Tuck. I keep my bargains. I told you I'd make you all rich. But if you care to refuse, what can I do? Come on, Winnie. It's time we returned you. You gotta be crazy, mister. We're not gonna let you take Winnie. Those can't hurt us, nothing can. Hold it right there. Unless, of course, you want me to test her immortality, too. Huh? All right, now, Winnie. Come on over here. Come on, girl, over here. Do you hear me, child? I said get over here! Better do as he says, Winnie. But I don't want to go. It's all right, do as he says. You're a man of good sense, Mr. Tuck. But then after 140 years on the planet, I'd expect you to be. I just thought of something. You know them demonstrations I was proposing? Well, I don't need your family, Tuck. Little Winnie here will do just fine. Fine and fine. After she drinks the water, she'll be ever so appealing. And then, a little girl that lives forever. <laughs> She's a dead one. Come on with me if I have to drag you every step of the way. Yeah. Oh, what are we going to do? Hold it right there, mister. Nothing you want a bullet in the brain. I warned you, Chuck! He was going to do it. He was actually going to do it. Going to do what? Seems like we got a dead man here. He ain't dead. He's still breathing. Drop that shotgun, mister. One shooting's enough around here. My name's Constable Thomas, and I'm placing you under arrest. Pa, you can't let him do this. Uh, he don't know the facts. What facts? I'm coming through the woods, and I hear a shot. I see that fellow lying there, and your pa standing here with a gun in his hand. Oh, but he was going to hurt Winnie. He was my deputy. You folks is the kidnappers. He came here to bring her home. They didn't kidnap me. I came because I wanted to come. Wanted to? 
You wanted to be with them instead of your own kin. Why, well, your ma's home crying her eyes out. Oh, May, I don't know what I want. May, what will I do? There's only one thing you can do, honey. you got to go home with the constable. But what about Mr. Tuck? Oh, don't you worry none about him. They can't hurt Tuck. You don't want Mr. Tuck here to stand charge on murder. You better hitch your wagon up and quick. There's only two roads out of here. One goes to the Sawbones, the other to the Gallows. Take your pick. We won't let him die, no matter what. Hitch up the wagon, boys. We'll take him to the doctors. me. All she does is sit there. She's in shock, as the doctor said. A terrible experience. But it's been two days now. Uh, it's going to take time. I was thinking, if that man should die, we'd have the woods back. It'd be ours again. That's right. But it's a mighty unchristian thing to hope for. Let's hope and pray that man he shot gets better, even if it does cost us the wood. I hope and pray he dies. Breakfast. Yeah, sorry to be late. The folks have been stopping me all up and down the line to talk about it. Talk about what? Well, that, uh, that fellow that got their tuck shot. He up and died last night. Oh, there'll be a murder trial. Oh, yeah, they'll hang him, sure. Well, I got to be going. You ain't the only household on my route. Although you is the purriest housekeeper. Oh, go on with yourself now, and the devil take you. <laughs> Morning, Miss Winnie. Not us. We're camped the other side of the wood. Where that Sullivan fellow's supposed to kill his wife. Nobody ever goes there. Jess, man Tuck shot. He died last night. That means ain't no other way. Now we gotta do it. Do what? Get Paul out of that jail. But why? When the trial comes, they'll ask me to testify, and I'll tell him the truth. I'll have to. That's providing there is a trial. We heard some folks don't want none. They want a hanging. But even if they do hang Tuck, he's still not going to die. Don't you see, Jesse? You don't see, Winnie. If you tell the truth, then the whole world will know about the spring. It won't be our secret no more. And even if he was to lie, no matter who hangs Pa, they're going to wonder why they can't kill him. We're calling doctors, experts from everywhere. And then they'll know, Winnie. They'll know that Pa can't die. Jess, what can we do? Miles and I got a plan. The only thing is that constable watches over Paul like a hawk. We need a good six hours to get away where they can't find us. Do you understand my meaning, Winnie? You want me to help? Can't do it without you, Winnie. I'll help. Of course I'll help. If it weren't for me, Tuck wouldn't be in jail. I just knew he could count on you, Winnie. But you gotta understand, Winnie. Once we get away, well... We won't be coming back. Not for years, anyway.
What is it? Water I bottled this morning. From the spring. Ready? Ready? Where are you? That's my mother. I better go. Tonight, then, at midnight. I'll be there. Hide and bottle in your pocket. Ready? Ready? I'm here, Mama. I'm coming. Wake somebody up. Come on. You can ride on my back. But we could be. Don't worry. Trust me. Come on. Come on. Give my ankle a second to heal, huh? All right, let's go. Hey! Come on. I can't see. You gotta hurry. Wait a minute. We can use an ear of corn. Come on, Wayne. around here are not going to take kindly to it, you know, you're helping tough get away. I'm sure, man. I thought about it all day. And Jesse told me what you wanted me to do. Good, good. You need ready. Good. Then we can start the fireworks. Fireworks? My has got them at the background. I think this thing ought to loosen up now. A few tugs ought to do it. We'll wait until you hear the ruckus, then put your back into it. All right. Don't worry, Paul help. Me too. Here's your satchel, son. Good luck. I'm gonna need it. Okay, here I go.
strong than I thought. Oh, yes. Hold it right where you are. What in the Sam Hill's going on here, Constable? All right, you lynchers, take one step toward this jail, you get a load of buckshot in your chest. We ain't done nothing, Constable. We're just out to see the fireworks. Fireworks? Somebody's been shooting off Roman candles. And firecrackers. You mean, you ain't no lynch party? Would we come to a lynching in our nightshirts? Jumping, gee, hustle it. My prisoner! Tuck, Tuck, you in there? I see you moving. Answer me. I know you couldn't have slept through all that racket. Oh, what racket? All I heard was a few firecrackers. How'd you know they was firecrackers? Because one of them came sailing through the window. Want to see it? Oh, no, sir, Bob. You ain't getting me into that cell without the deputy to hold the lamp. Then I'll thank you to take your lamp and let me get some sleep. Going to court in the morning. Yeah, and to the hanging free right after. But we'll just have to wait and see about that. Good night, Constable. Yeah, for a man that's about to stretch a rope, you're the coolest character I ever did see. There's worse things than hanging, Constable. Take it from a man who's lived a long life. Yeah, now I gotta go fix that darn window. Don't know what gets into kids these days. Weren't that way when I was a boy. Winnie, keep low, Winnie. And don't say nothing. Constable might hear you. I just want to thank you for what you're doing for us tonight. And I want you to remember what I said to you out on the pond. It's important, Winnie. God bless you, child. Goodbye, Winnie. If I'd have had a girl, bless you, Winnie. We're going now, Winnie. But I'll be back. I, I swear I will. As soon as you're 17. Remember me, Winnie. Remember. What's all that whisper going on in there? You hear me, Tuck? Who are you talking to? Ghosts, Constable. Just ghosts. Quiet down, will you? You're giving me the willies. I will, Constable, I promise you. You'll hear from me no more. Coffee. 
I prefer mine black. Slow down. I've had enough of this. We've always held our heads high. Do you want to shame your mother, your grandmother, and me? I only have one question to ask you. Why did you do this to us? I love them. They're my friends. And I love you. I love you very well. No more questions. Hey, you. Go on home. Go on, you, uh... Boys. Boys. Foster, ain't you? Uh, Gertie's already gone home for the day. What are you selling, crayfish? No, ma'am, too late. These here are the last turtles. For soup? They're all fattened up for their winter's resting. Stew. That's what the other ladies are going to make of them. This is my turtle. Well, it's certainly not mine. I need a snapper. You can't sell this turtle. Miss, I found this one just like I did the others. But I've seen this one. Miss, they look an awful lot alike. No, I'm certain. You can't put this one in a pot. Well, I'm certainly not going to buy a turtle. I'm not going to use. Pardon, ma'am. Ain't no use to fight these whims. My little sister, she took a piglet to her heart. We ain't been able to butcher that pig yet. She makes such a fuss. Miss Winnie can have the turtle. Oh, thank you. Now, don't do that, miss. You let that turtle go and I'll have him again. 
I know where he hides. If it ain't this year, it'll be next year for sure. Did I do the right thing? And I may never see the tux again. Ever. Unless I drink the water. But Justice said to wait until I was 17. And that's a long time. Everybody thinks I'm a little crazy because I won't talk about the tux. But you understand, don't you, Turtle? Because you were there at the very beginning. Winifred? Is that you out there? Who are you talking to? Nobody, Grandmother. Well, now don't tell me I'm hearing things. You must be talking to somebody. What's that you're holding? Just a turtle. Winnie, now you just got to learn to stop coddling things. We'll just give that turtle to Girlie and she'll make a nice soup out of it. No, Granny. Well, now, turtles were meant to be eaten and folks are meant to help eat them and that's the way of all flesh. I see that turtle again and it gets dropped in a pot. Hear? I hear. Don't you worry, I'm not going to let them make soup out of you. You're the only one that knows. I'll make sure you're never soup. Jesse gave this to me. But I can always get more. It is our spring. I'd like to see them make soup out of you. But if they can't, well then, they'll begin to wonder. You better get out into the wood. Go on. Shush. Oh, I'll just have to put you in the wood. barn, every house all changed around. I never thought it'd be this hard. Well, the outlines of the hills haven't changed. That's the gap right over there. Well, we're never going to find her house just wandering. We'd best stop and ask. I guess you're right. Regular? Here to go. 
Uh, black. Uh, a cup of black coffee. Could I have a strawberry phosphate? Sure. Joey, you got the makings of a strawberry phosphate? Whatever that is. You mean you ain't old enough to know, huh? She wants a soda. Sure, you can have a soda. You folks from around here? Yes. No. Uh-huh. We got friends in the area. We was children together. You know how it is. Well, sure, a lot of people are like you, moving out. That's what I want to do when I retire. I want to get a wooden bagel and just go. Well, you must know the area pretty well, then. Grew up here. There used to be a woods just the other side of town. You mean the old picnic ground? No, the one with a big beech tree right in the center. Oh, I got it. Now, that's gone. I heard a storm split that big tree right in two. What about the spring? I don't know anything about a spring. Like I told you, they bulldozed the whole area out after the storm leveled it. Well, you wouldn't know who owns that land now, would you? Fosters used to own it. Oh, I haven't heard anything about them in years. Have you, Joey? Who? Oh. The people who used to own the woods. Ah. Uh, I haven't heard of them since the son was elected to Congress. Yeah. Beloved wife, dearest mother. It's nice she had young'uns. Yes, it is. She never drank the water. Jesse's sure to grieve. Oh, he'll get over it. Everything passes in time. Except in us. Except in us. I seem to remember this old cemetery, but everything else has changed. You should be used to that by now. I think so, wouldn't you? The woods. Now, they'd be right over there, wouldn't they? No, they're out that way, by that clutch of houses. Well, anyway, they're gone. So is the spring. Paved over, most likely. We need to see to that. I'm sure she had that spring hidden years ago. Well, we're the only ones left. Yep. You, me, Miles and Jesse. be late for our reunion with the boys. Carousel wheel at the fairgrounds. Wonder if they're still using my old wooden horses. I expect so. Who else makes them anymore? Yeah, I guess you're right. Today everything's plastic. Plastic cars, plastic horses. That reminds me. We better move Ginger around to some other farm pretty soon. Wouldn't want anybody to get too suspicious. 
I wonder if anybody will ever use a real farm horse again. Well, if they do, we'll live to see it. All right, May. Climb aboard. Ready? Never get tired of that old tune, do you? Old tunes is best, I always say. Well, well, will you look at this? A turtle in suburbia. <laughs> Never thought I'd see the likes of you again. Especially around these parts. All right, now you better get going. Stay off the road. Darn fool thing thinks it's going to live forever. <laughs> 